Hey guys, welcome back. This problem is going to be testing your ability to use Newton's laws and also acceleration and velocity analysis. All right, here's the problem. Let's say that we've got this block right here and it's traveling at a constant velocity, so there's no friction towards this spring. And let's say that after some time, we don't know how long, then the spring reaches its maximum compression, the block stops moving for an instant, and then the block starts to move to the left because the spring pushes it back. And we're asked, just off this information provided and the fact that the compression, the maximum compression of the spring is 10 centimeters, we're asked to find out what the velocity of the block was. And just to get an understanding of what we mean by a 10 centimeter compression, we're basically saying that this distance from here to here is 10 centimeters or if you're like 0.1 meters, okay? That's what we're saying. Okay, now in order to do this problem, I strongly recommend that you create an axis first. And I'm gonna choose my axis to be right here, right where this spring point is, just here. I'm not gonna actually connect my axis to the spring, I'm just gonna place it where the spring is at this particular point, okay? All right, now based off all the information given, have a shot at this problem yourself and come back when you're done. It's really important you give this a shot yourself first. Okay, well in order to do this, first we need to use um, a free body diagram. So let's do that. Let's actually redraw our scenario just below. And let's see what happens when our block comes into contact with the spring at some point while the spring is compressed. Not when it's fully compressed, not when it's not compressed, but sometime mid compression. So maybe, I don't know, maybe like right around here, say. Right around here. Right, let's say the block is right here. And let's say that this is our spring just there, okay? Don't forget, it's a spring, con uh, spring constant of 10 newtons per meter. Okay, so first things first. We know that the spring at this point has been compressed a distance x, all right? So uh, based off where we placed our axis, it's been compressed a distance x. So that means we know that there's going to be a force acting on it, just one horizontal force of kx. Um, and, and, and so this will be the force being applied on the block in the horizontal direction. There are some other forces too, but they're not overly important. We're going to have mg downwards, and we're also going to have our normal force, n upwards, right? And let's actually do um, a force analysis acceleration, uh, sorry, force acceleration analysis using Newton's laws. Well, first things first, we know that due to Newton, we can say that the sum of forces in the horizontal direction is going to be equal to the mass of your block times your acceleration of your block. And let me break down this formula so it's a little bit clear. This refers to the um, sum of forces, the sum of forces on your block, right? And this refers to the mass of your block, and this refers to the acceleration of your block. I hope that doesn't confuse anyone. Okay, well, let's think about it. What are, this, what are the forces acting on our block right now? Well, based off where we've placed our axis, the number of, uh, the only force, in fact, acting in the horizontal direction is kx. And it's negative because it's to the left, right? So what that means, that we can write this as minus kx, that's the left-hand side of this equation, is going to be equal to the mass of your block, I'll just write m for now, times by the acceleration of your block. Fantastic, we've got one equation already, all ready to go. Fantastic, but we're, that's not enough to solve this problem. So let's see if we can solve this problem another way. Well, well, sorry, let's see if we can get another equation to help us solve this problem. All right, well, we know that dvx dt is gonna be equal to a subscript x, right? So that basically means the change in rate of uh, velocity is equal to your acceleration. Well, what we can do now is we can use the chain rule to write this as a subscript x is equal to dvx dx times by dx dt, right? That's the chain rule. Confirm with me that that's right. Notice the x's cancel off, so I really haven't done anything, right? And the beauty of doing that is so that we can write this as dv subscript x dx times by dx dt, which is actually v subscript x, right? That's the beauty of doing that. And then we can write, once we times by dx and integrate, we're left with the integral of a subscript x dx is actually equal to the integral of v subscript x dvx. I hope I'm not losing you. I'm just evaluating this formula just here. Okay? And the beauty of doing that is we've got two equations now, um, and we can substitute a subscript x into there. We know from equation one, let me write it here, from equation one, 
we can write a subscript x is actually just going to be equal to minus k on m times x, right? That's just rearranging this beast just here, okay? So let's substitute that into equation 2. So sub equation 1 in equation 2, and what do we get? What do we get? Well, we're left with the integral of minus k on m dx is equal to the integral of v subscript x dvx. I hope that wasn't too hard because this is where the hardest step comes in and it's arguably the hardest bit to explain so bear with me. Um, here we have to evaluate either the definite integral or the indefinite integral. So we'll see how we do this and we do that based off boundary conditions. So let's have a look at this. Let's, let's go back to our picture. This is what our block looks like when it comes into contact with the spring just here. It looks something like this. Because it's, because it's traveling at a constant velocity, this will be the same velocity as it was over here, right? And we know that at this point, not only is the block, is the, sorry, is the spring unstretched, so x is going to be equal to zero, but we also know that the velocity, at, I'll just call this state one, v1, is just going to be v. This is the velocity we're trying to find out, v. Right, so that's v1, and this is x1, right? What about state 2? I'll call this state 2 when, we're, um, when the spring's fully compressed. We know that x is actually going to be equal to 10 centimeters, if you're like 0 0.1 meters, right? That's because that's the distance you've moved to get from here to here. That's 0 0.1 meters. I hope that makes sense. Let me just draw that to make it clear. Okay. And we also know, and this is the... I guess the genius part of this problem, we also know that the velocity at our second point is going to be equal to zero meters per second. That's really cool. We know it's zero because it, the block has been fully compressed, right? If, think about it. If the block is compressing against the spring and it reaches its maximum compression, at that instant, the block has no velocity, right? It still has an acceleration, but no velocity. Right? And then the instant later, the, the velocity will start moving towards the left as the block starts to be pushed towards the left by the spring. Okay, so let's use these um, uh, boundary conditions and plug them into our definite integral. Well, here, um, it, remember, at, at for state 1, let me write it here so I'm not confusing you. For state 1, that's when the spring's unstretched, v1 is equal to v, and x1 is is equal to zero. For state two, for state two, v2 is equal to zero, and x2 is going to be equal to, uh, what did I say, was it 10 centimeters? Was it 10 centimeters? Yes, it was, 10 centimeters. 0 0.1 meters. Fantastic. So we can plug that into our um, definite integral, and we're left with, well, we're integrating over x, so we'll be integrating from zero to 0 0.1, and we'll be integrating our velocity from v to zero. Interesting. Okay, so let's see if we can solve this using mathematics. We know k and m are constants, so we can factorize them out. Um, that should be kx. I apologize. That should be minus k on mx dx. I apologize if I confused you there. So we can factorize the k on m out, and that's times the integral of x, which is just going to evaluate into x squared on 2, with limits from 0 to 0 0.1, is equal to, let's see, the integral of v, which is just going to be vx squared on 2, with limits from v to 0. And when we evaluate that, we're going to be minus k on m, times by, I hope you can remember this from high school, it's 0 0.1 squared on 2 minus 0 squared on 2, is going to be equal to uh, 0 squared on 2 minus v squared on 2. Fantastic. All right, well, let's see if we can solve for v now. This is just becomes a matter of algebra. This is easy. That turns into zero. This is easy. That turns into zero. So we're left with minus k on m times by 0 0.1 squared on 2 is going to be equal to minus v squared on 2. Fair enough. We also know k was equal to 10 newtons per meter. And we also know the mass of your block was 4 kilograms. Right, so let's plug all that in. And we're left with minus 10 times 0 0.1 squared over 4 times 2. Right, and then let's uh, times by minus 2 on both sides. And what we're left with is minus v squared on 2 times by minus 2. The purpose of doing that is so that we can cancel these out. Bam, bam. And what we're left with is v squared is going to be equal to 2 times 10 times 0 0.1 squared 
over, let's see if I got that right, 2 times 10 times 0 0.1 squared over 4 times 2. Yep. And uh, I'll, rather than writing it out, I'll just do this all in one step. I'll square root, plug this into your calculator, and what you're left with is 2 times 10, 2 times 10 times 0 0.1 squared all over 8. And your answer is, your answer is your velocity is going to be equal to 0 0.15 eight meters per second. This is your speed of your block before it hits the spring. Basically, this is your velocity. V, v, v was 0 0.158 meters per second. That is the velocity of this block that must be necessary for this block to compress a spring 10 centimeters. I hope that makes sense, guys. This can also be done several different ways, I should mention, but um, you'll find that this is a really good way to practice your skills.